So I wanted to make this video to give you guys a brief introduction into the world of diamonds. Uh, there do exist multiple realms of industry in diamonds, uh, basically uh, poor quality that are used for industry, industrial cutting purposes primarily. There are unfinished stones, rough diamonds, uncut, that are sold and traded. And the aspect that I'll focus on is retail use. So the small percentage of diamonds that do qualify for cutting, polishing, and are of a good enough quality to be sold into the jewelry industry. Uh, that's basically what I do. So I work as a diamond dealer. I provide stones to retail clientele. I sell stones and buy stones from wholesalers that I have long-standing relationships with. And I also, on occasion, design custom pieces for certain clientele uh, utilizing the diamonds that I provide for them or the diamonds that they have. So it's important that you guys understand first and foremost that there is a huge misconception with regard to the rarity of diamonds and how the rarity impacts the valuation of them. Most people are under the impression that diamonds are so expensive because they are rare and not many of them exist, whereas the opposite is actually true. So there exists a giant corporation called De Beers. De Beers, for over a hundred years now, has basically been the conglomerate that controls the entire diamond industry. And it sounds crazy that one company can do that, um, but they've monopolized it completely. And the way that they've done that is in, through acquisition of mines, in addition to the ones that they had themselves, which were already very significant, Kimberly, Africa being the first and primary, um, but also in withholding, in withholding their actual diamond reserves. So they have been for years and years and years mining at full capacity, taking the diamonds out of the earth and just stockpiling them and keeping them in order to prevent those stones from being put onto the market and then as a result lowering the value of all the other diamonds on the market. So it, rather than allowing the market to be flooded, they've positioned themselves in a way where they can keep and retain for themselves off market the majority, allowing only five to 10% of what is actually mined to be presented for sale. And in doing that, they're able to keep the myth, not only the myth of the rarity of the diamond, but also the ridiculous prices on diamonds. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on is there also exists some marketing and basically attempts to sell people diamonds that typically were considered poor and of very little value, like black diamonds, for example, um, and pass those off as being rare also and selling those and creating a market for those. So it's important that you guys understand there are differences uh, in diamonds and how they're valued. There are colored diamonds that have great value. Uh, many of them have value far beyond that of the traditional white diamond. Um, touching briefly on that, I'll tell you also it's important to be able to distinguish and be aware that most of the colored diamonds that you'll see, you know, a lot of people have what they think are blue diamonds, you know, red diamonds, yellow diamonds, whatever the case may be, pink diamonds, most of them are what are called radiated stones, meaning they did not naturally get mined in that color. So they were taken from the earth and they were exposed to very high levels of radiation in order to um, synthetically create that color. So those are considered enhanced diamonds. And it's important that you understand any diamond that has had any kind of man-made intervention, whether it be color enhancement, whether it be clarity enhancement, attempts to cover, remove, or you know, uh, take away the impact of impurities within a stone, significantly reduces the value of the stone. So keep that in mind, that you want to make sure that you're buying a completely natural diamond with no enhancements. If you want to take the route of the enhancements for uh, financial reasons or budget reasons, it, it can be you know, sensible if you do it knowingly. So as long as you understand what you're buying and you're not you know, mistakenly thinking something is what it's not, that's fine for you to do also. So going back to the color, 
white diamonds are traditionally um, the most valuable. So there exists a color scale starting at D, which is completely colorless. So D is the best color that a diamond can have. It means without any color at all, completely white. It continues on through the alphabet all the way to Z. The spectrum changes as you get further and more yellow appears. Typically, what's considered a white diamond would visually look white up until about G color. So you have D, E, F, G, maybe H, I, depending on who's looking at it. But beyond that, once you get into the J, K, L, you will see to the naked eye a slight tint of yellow, especially if you compare it to a whiter stone or put it on a white piece of paper, any kind of white backdrop. So it's, it, it's funny about this because a stone that has a little bit of yellow, like mid-range in the alphabet, L color, M color, is considered poor, very poor color. So it's a very difficult stone to sell. The value is significantly less than that of the white, colorless. However, as you continue further on the spectrum and that saturation of color becomes more pronounced, you get to Z and Z has clear yellow to it, still not extremely valuable, but further beyond that, there are criteria for what are called fancy colored stones. So as far as those colors go, there is fancy light yellow, uh, fancy medium, fancy intense, and then the highest fancy vivid yellow, which is uh, typically termed a canary diamond. So when you get that far on the spectrum, those stones could actually be worth more than the absolute colorless. So in talking about, you know, colored stones, yellow in this case, it's important you understand that the saturation of the color, the distribution, and how evenly spread that is throughout the stone plays a significant factor as well. So there are a lot of things you want to know if you're going to go into the you know, yellow diamond realm. Going back briefly, what I mentioned about the radiated stones also, uh, just to give you a little bit of information, the most valuable stones are actually not going to be the yellow or the white, but naturally occurring red and blue diamonds, pink diamonds as well, which do exist and are extremely, extremely rare. As an example, uh, a one per carat, so a one carat stone, which is not huge, uh, in a white would typically cost between you know three thousand on up to ten thousand for a perfect flawless the max. That same stone in a red or blue could go for millions per carat, a million five, two million per carat. So you can get an idea of how valuable they become uh, when you get into the extremely rare, but again naturally occurring stones. If you get a one carat radiated red or blue, it's nothing. So you got to understand there's a huge difference in that. So again, going back to the white diamonds, which are going to be the ones that you guys are mostly exposed to and probably purchasing, as I've told you about the color, I want you to understand also that it's important not to get caught up on the criteria of the paper, the certification, for example, in basically comparing that or having an expectation based on what you've heard. So a lot of customers come in and they have in mind that they want to have a D flawless diamond, for example, which is the best of the best. Best color, best clarity grade, right? And I explain to them that there are multiple reasons why they should not go that route into that extreme of quality. The first and primary reason, most obvious, is that they will not be able to distinguish that stone from one that is a, a couple grades off in clarity, even one or two grades off in color. Visually, to the untrained eye, the majority of people in the world will never see the minute differences when you get to that extreme level of, of quality um, that you're going to pay a monstrous price for. So for that reason, it doesn't make sense. You don't need to have a D flawless diamond because I can give you an F VS1 diamond and nobody would ever be able to tell you the difference. And keep in mind also that you know these um, determinations into clarity are done under 10 time magnification. So unless somebody's going to be walking around with a jeweler's loop magnifying and, and examining your stone, they're never going to be able to appreciate or even recognize 
what you just spent a fortune on. So again, a lot of people want it just for bragging rights to say I had this, this, but that's bullshit as far as I'm concerned. I try to uh, maximize people's budgets and provide for them the best that I can get, what makes the most sense for them in all parameters. So for me, where I advise people to be as far as getting the most value for your, your, your budget with regard to color is between G and H color. G and H is still presents beautifully. Um, the premiums are reduced significantly from the D, E, F, uh, but again, you still have excellent quality. So that's typically where you want to be in the color scale if you know um, you, you want you're concerned with budget and you want to get the best you can get for the price. With regard to clarity, which I haven't touched on yet, Clarity is basically the second or equivalent in importance to color as far as determination of value for a stone. Um, the clarity scale starts at flawless, as I mentioned, internally flawless. It goes um, VVS1, VVS2, VS1, VS2, SI1, SI2, I1, I2 to imperfect. And basically what those things mean is, I'll just touch briefly, the flawless is obviously without any internal flaw. It's impossible to detect anything. It's perfectly pure and perfect. Um, the VVS one means there is a very, very slight inclusion visible, one, under 10 time magnification, VVS two, two visible inclusions, and so on with the VS. VS means slightly included. Um, still again, extremely difficult for anybody to see that imperfection if they are not trained to look for these things. VS2 has two slight imperfections. SI1 and SI2 are going to be where you're going to get the most bang for the buck, like I just mentioned with regard to color. So G color, G to H, SI1, SI2. And I say that because the SI1, meaning you'll see an inclusion in there, is not visible to you. Depending on how where the placement of that inclusion is also plays a role. So I could have a G, you know, a two carat round G SI1 on this hand and a two carat round G SI1 on this hand where the placement of the inclusion makes the stones co uh, present completely different. So if the one inclusion on this stone is directly in the center below the table, which is the top surface of the diamond, obviously it's going to be visible much more visible than if it were placed elsewhere. Uh, ideally, where that, um, in this case, imperfection could be uh, is along the outer portion, you know, uh, along the girdle of, this, of the stone, where when I then set the stone, when I actually mount it in the ring, I can use what's called a prong, right, the, the pieces of metal that hold the stone in place. I can place the stone and hide that imperfection underneath that prong. So now, once mounted, this SI1, you're going to see the imperfection in the center. This one is going to appear to be flawless because the only imperfection that was there, I've hidden and removed from sight. Again, this is just giving you guys some further information, you know, if in case you're on the market or you will be soon, it's important that you understand these variables. Uh, Clarity-wise, I stay away from anything, you know, past SI2 because you will see it to the naked eye. I1, I2 means the stone's imperfect. There's a one visible imperfection or the two or beyond. I stay away from those. But again, it, you know, there's no right or wrong in this. It's whatever makes sense for you, you know, whatever works for your budget. And try not to get too caught up in these things. If you guys happen to be on the market for a diamond, um, this industry in itself is one where people tend to really take advantage of the lack of of knowledge that the general consumer will have. So, you know, feel free to, you know, ask me questions. I'm, I'm happy to help, even if it's just, you know, hey, listen, I'm, I'm shopping this stone and this is what it is. This is a copy of the certificate and this is what they're asking. Is this a fair price? And I'm always happy to help in that regard. So try not to get ripped off out there because people will absolutely take advantage of you. So I hope this guy, this helped you guys out a little bit. There are a lot of other things involved also. You know, um, diamonds come in many different shapes. The most popular is the traditional round, which is actually termed round brilliant. 
Another one that's very popular these days, second to the round, is a princess cut, which is actually a square stone. Uh, and there are many others, you know, so they, they're, they're also cyclical as far as how they come into fashion and trend. So as an example, in the 80s up until the mid-90s, um, the more popular stones, which were selling for a premium, were called marquee shape. There's a marquee shape, there's a pear shape, there's an oval shape, which were selling, again, above uh, book value. And the opposite is now the case. So people who have those stones who paid big bucks for them back then, looking to sell them now, take a big hit because, again, the fashion and the trend has just changed. And it's not that anymore. Now it's the, you know, the round, as always, and the princess and some others like Asher cut, cushion cut, etc. There are a lot. But again, guys, I just wanted to you know, give you some information because uh, I, I can imagine that for most people out there, you know, any information that you'll get with regard to this, should you be on the market especially, is going to be from the person looking to sell you the stone. So they're going to give you a lot of bullshit information, whereas for me, I have, you know, no incentive either way, and I'm just happy to really help if I could. So I hope you guys took something out of this. Thanks.